In this video, I will show you how to create a side-by-side -side squares area graph using Triticulator. We start with the CSV data file that is created from the Excel template I explained in a previous video. This video is part of the Creating Area Graphs in Triticulator playlist. The introduction video in the playlist will give you an overview of the different videos in the playlist. Start by going to charticulator.com in a browser. When you're there, click on the Launch Charticulator button. You'll see the new visual page. Notice down here in the privacy note. It says that uh, the data remains on your machine and is not shared with Microsoft. So you'll notice this and that it does not get star stored on the Microsoft system. This may allow you to use Charticulator with corporate data without violating data privacy rules, but please check with your data privacy policy or advisor to make sure. Click on the open button. This will allow you to select the CSV file that you saved from the Excel file in our previous video. I'm going to click on my CSV file and click on Open. Now, what you'll notice is, is you see a preview of the data file. Make sure that it is the data file that you wanted and it looks correct. If it does, click on the Done button to confirm that the data import is correct. Now we see our panel and we need to start building our graph. The first thing we're going to do is to, we're going to add a rectangle glyph. So these are the glyphs here. So I'm going to click on the rectangle glyph. I'm going to drag it to the glyph area. You'll notice it now adds it. The next thing we need to do is to tell Charticulator how big this is supposed to be. Well, we see our data values here in our panel. And what we want to do is we want to drag our width, click it and drag it over to the bottom, because that's going to be the width, and drag our height to the side, and that's going to be our height. And you'll notice that you can now see on the right-hand side, the area graph is being created. The squares are proportional to the area because we've used the width and height that was calculated for each of those squares. So now what we can do is we can start to do some formatting. First thing we're going to do is to click on the title element in the chart layer. I'm going to scroll down in the attributes just to show you that you can set the actual title. So here's where you can edit it. So it takes the text for the title from the file name. So it just uses whatever the file name was, but you can enter your own and change it there. So I'm going to enter uh, the title, um, and I'm going to say uh, country GDP 2017, because that's the data that I'm using here from the World Bank. You'll notice there are other formatting in terms of the font, the size, uh, and how that title is uh, formatted. So you can choose those if you really need to do that. The next area that we want to look at is the plot segment area. So the plot segment area, what that does is it allows us to control the arrangement of the shapes within the plot area. So you can set the alignment and the spacing if you want to do that. The alignment here is that it's going to be stacked X, so that's from left to right, which is what we want, and uh, left aligned and bottom, which is what we want. Now, if you want these squares, for example, to be aligned at the top instead of the bottom, you can change that or you can change it in the middle as well. We're going to leave it to the bottom. So you do have some of the options in terms of the layout. The gap, you'll notice here it's 10%. You can make that bigger or smaller as needed. Of course, when we bring this into PowerPoint, we're going to be able to make the formatting changes and move them however we want anyways. Now, if you want to add text to your shapes, what you can do is you can click on the text icon and drag it onto the glyph in the area. And it now allows us to put in the text. So to put in the text, what we do is we'll drag the, uh, so we've got our text related to our glyph. 
and you notice the text here in the attribute section just says text because it doesn't know what you want there. So what we can do is we want the label, we can grab that label and drag it to this spot. And you'll notice it says drop here to map data. So I'll drop that on and you'll notice it now adds the country name as the text. So if you want both the, the label and the value, so in this case, the country name and the number, then it's a little more complicated because it only allows you to drag one at a time, but it does allow you to edit this formula, this code that it puts in. So here's what we have to do. I'm gonna click on text one and it highlights that code. I'm gonna press control C to copy that text. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag the value label down to map that. And you'll notice it replaces what was there. But when I click in this field and I go to the start, it does allow me to edit the text. So since I copied that previous, I can press Control V to paste and say put a colon and a space. So I separate those two. And now when I hit enter to accept it, you'll notice what it's done is it's now added the name, colon, space, and then the number. And the number has one decimal place. How do we change that? Well, in this code, if we go over to the right-hand side, you'll notice there is at the end here, period 1F. That is the indicator for how many decimal places. So I can change that to zero and it removes that decimal place. So it does give you some of the uh, options, uh, but it is coded. Uh, so unless you understand how to program that, and I haven't figured that out yet, um, this is the easiest way is just simply copy the code that it creates and paste it back in. Now there's other formatting for the text as well. Again, the font uh, size and those sorts of things that you can change if you're desired. Now in this particular uh, area graph, the colors are all gray and it really doesn't matter what those are because we're gonna change them in PowerPoint anyways. Um, if you did need to change them here, you can just click on the shape glyph and then scroll down in the style and you can change the fill color here. But in our case, we're just going to leave them uh, as we want. And we've got the, uh, the visual looking exactly with the way we want. The area graph looks the way we want it to. So now we can export it to the SVG image file. So we're gonna go to the export button at the top here, click on export, and it allows us to export it in different ways. So we're gonna use export as an image that's already selected, and then we can select the different types of images here. The one that we want is an SVG image file. Now, if you do not have a version of PowerPoint that will import an SVG file, then you may want to consider selecting the JPEG or the ping, it's just you're only going to have as an image and you can't edit it in PowerPoint later on. But we're gonna click on the SVG and what it does is it downloads that file in your browser the way that your browser downloads any file and it downloads it to your default download location. So what you can do is, is you can then go and move it to wherever you want it to do. Now, what you can do to go back to your visual, just click the back button with Inch Articulator to go back. If you want to save this visual because it's one that you want to work on later on or make some changes, you can click on the Save button at the top here. And what it does is it allows you to give the chart a name and then save it to My Charts. Anytime you save it to My Charts, again, it's only saving to your own machine. It's not saving it to Microsoft servers. And anytime you want to access it, in that new visuals uh, screen that we saw earlier, just click on this open link here and you will see all of your saved charts. So what we've done is we have created a visual that is a side-by-side -side squares area graph. We've saved the SVG file ready to import that into PowerPoint. If you found this video helpful, there are three things you can do to help me out. First, click the like button below the video on YouTube. Second, leave a comment with any questions or feedback. And third, subscribe to my channel. Check out my websites and other videos with more tips and advice. Thanks again for watching.